Here's the deal. Dragonflight might not be WoW's only source of hope. There's new additions to the patch 9.2.5 PTR that are seriously exciting. I'm not messing around with that. Blizzard appears to be working on an overhaul of how raid gearing works. Now, you might just say to me, oh, this is end of expansion quality of life in the face of dwindling player counts. And yeah, sure, they totally did that in patch 8.3. But this time, Ian's actually addressed that criticism a few times in interviews. And about this sort of thing specifically, he said that it reflects a change in philosophy. And about this change in gearing, the team have said that if it goes down well, then this sort of thing could be worked into Dragonflight. That is fantastic news. Like squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming, who are of course today's sponsor. Now, just last weekend, I added a media section to our Game Studios website. It was dead easy and it was super fast. It also needed to be. I had a bunch of videos to do. I had a holiday deadline looming and I just used their templates. It was great. All I had to do was select the layout that I want, apply the color themes that I'd used earlier in making the site and then upload a bunch of images. And essentially, Todd Howard style, it just worked. All super quick and easy. And then when it comes to adding in some of the YouTube videos we've done and soon enough audio, because I know a lot of you would like an audio gallery for the game, I know that adding that will be just as smooth. Of course, they make so much more easy. Membership features, email list, e-commerce, and loads of other fantastic features. Of course, last time I gave e-commerce a whirl and it was so easy. So get started today with Squarespace's award-winning templates and build your presence on the web. To do that, squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming, right? Follow that use code Bellular Gaming, you will get 10% off. So thanks to Squarespace for supporting the channel, and let's go. Okay, let's dive into this new gearing system, the one that could be brilliant for Dragonflight. This whole saga began a few weeks ago. Three vendors appeared in the PTR, one for each raid. Now they've just had their items added, and more importantly, they've had the currency used to buy those items added. Each vendor has got a selection of weapons and trinkets from each raid. Okay, right now there's no weapons from Nathria, and not a complete selection of things from Sanctum, but maybe that's just incomplete. But anyway, the point here is that weapons and trinkets are extremely important. As we know, these are the very slots where some bad luck will hold you back compared to your peers and also just make you feel kind of shitty. And this is where the new currency, Puzzling Cartel Dinars, comes into play. Each item on the raid loot vendor costs one dinar. You can hold three dinars at once and you'll only actually ever get three in the season. Acquisition is weird, it's different. There's a quest line with three stages. The first stage, kill 30 unique bosses. The second, 20, the third, 10. And if you don't get them all in one raid, you could drop down to LFR, it just is unique boss kills. Each step in the chain gets you a dinar. Of course, if you kill a boss on heroic, then that will be one kill. If you kill that same boss on LFR, that wouldn't count. It's just kills of the unique boss in a week, regardless of difficulty. Now, Blizzard have said they've made this system because season four won't last as long and the whole fated situation that basically rotates the raid that you want to do each week does mean that you'll get fewer shots at key items from just killing a boss within this season. However, they also know that it basically serves to slice out the most negative part of the acquisition bell curve by giving people deterministic guaranteed loot. Now you can only get three in the season, right? Three. And that does kind of feel bad on Glance, doesn't it? But in time's gone by, how many bits of VP gear did you get? Uh, plus, this is targeted towards the most impactful slots. VP gear was not. Now the gear that you get from these vendors and the dinars is normal mode gear, which is instantly going to make you think it's bloody useless, but no, because there is another piece to this puzzle, a major one. Raid gear upgrades. Yeah, you can upgrade your raid loot. Put simply, 9.2.5 heroic and mythic boss kills drop a new item. It's, okay, I'll spare you the confusing first ones-ish naming convention. Heroic boss kills will drop a fragment. 
If you get 20 of these fragments, then you can upgrade a piece of loot to heroic quality. The same applies for Mythic. 20 kills equals one upgrade token. Now, these drop from day one of the season. They have a 100% drop rate, and that means they're a 100% deterministic way to improve your character. Wonderful, right? This system has a few uses. First up, it synergizes perfectly with the dinars. Of course, by the time you have one dinar, if you're raiding heroic, you'll actually already have one upgrade item. And this means that a heroic raider could just buy the trinket they want or the weapon they want and then upgrade it to the item level they want. Now, this is fantastic. It essentially ensures that you are not going to be screwed over in that slot. And also, it's a satisfying enough thing to work towards. Of course, it's useful beyond that. Many guilds, say like my own, we like to progress through normal first and be nice and chill and social and then do heroic. Right now, that normal loot can feel kind of throwaway. Even if it's the item you really want, because then you're just thinking to yourself, oh, well, you know, I'll just have to get the heroic version again. Unlike, say, in the Mythic Plus system, where if somebody gets, say, their uh, inscrutable quantum device, they always know that even if they get it at a low item level, it's like, oh, thank God, I have one. I can just use VP to keep it up to date. With this system, your normal mode raid drops, say that one trinket from normal mode you really wanted, that will still feel really good because you know you've got the option to carry that item with you for longer because of the upgrade system. It also means that when heroic time comes around, even if you don't get drops from the raid, each kill will progress you towards an upgrade. Now sure, this is not the exact same as Valor Points in past expansions. Badges of Frost and Wrath. But, well really much of the principle is the same. It is a definite reward for doing the content. There is zero chance of RNG messing you around. Now RNG has an important role in a game like World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft has never had a full loot table on a vendor. I would not advocate for that. What players for a long time took issue with was RNG expanding beyond its initial purpose. And that was paired with a reduction in deterministic rewards. And that basically pulled the bell curve of experiences towards the left, creating more opportunities for a bad looting experience. A bad run of luck in your raid, combined with a bit of bad luck in the Great Vault, just feels horrible. It makes you wonder why you bothered, especially when perhaps you could just split your raid team off, do a few Mythic Plus runs, and get loot far faster. I mean, how many raiders, average raiders, are used to getting their best upgrades from Mythic Plus Great Vault slots? Meaning that Mythic Plus and raiding, for some players, kind of end up fighting each other. The big combined loot system can be very synergistic for the people who just want to know life of the game. Maybe raid three nights a week, run M plus with people in the other nights, and that's awesome for them. But for the people who just want to do their two raid nights a week and kind of just be a lot more chill outside of that, parts of the modern game have felt like a downgrade. And I'm one of those people. And I think for me, and for a lot of people like me, and I think that would extend to my guild as well, we're going to be in a much better situation here and in a way that's not going to take away from the way that other people play the game. And that's something that I'm quite happy about. You see, deterministic rewards were replaced with Titan Forging, right? And Blizzard's idea with Titan Forging was that you could still progress your character when you were doing a re-clear of a raid, right? Well, with the removal of Titan Forging, but no reintroduction of a deterministic progress system, we actually just ended up with nothing leaving the raid loot experience in a funky and pretty unrewarding feeling position. Hell, did that actually drive people towards purchasing loot funneling boost runs? Eh, all I know is that this is a straight upgrade to the game experience of World of Warcraft. Could it be better? Yeah, totally. See those dinars? I mean, I like how the pace increases after you get the first one, and Blizzard have said they're not interested in giving us more than three in the season. But honestly, Blizz, I do think three is a little bit low. I really do. And it's for a few reasons. As an example, for multi-spec players, that just doesn't feel great only having three. And quite frankly, 60 boss kills into a season. I mean, the people who really care about bleeding edge progress, they're not going to be impacted. 
At that point, I don't think it makes much sense to just turn the tap off. I think it's okay to keep it there to keep the game rewarding. There's no deep need to be conservative here. What if somebody gets a fourth or fifth dinar, has a spare upgrade item, and just buys a new, really powerful weapon for their off-spec, and maybe that actually encourages them to play with it a bit? That wouldn't be bad for the game. I don't think that this will overly compete with existing loot, and I actually think that if we're going to take the Dragonflight expansion in mind, then we should probably try to design a pacing for gearing that is a lot faster than Shadowlands. And the reason I say that is that Dragonflight will be a far more alt-friendly expansion from day one, with no borrowed power to grind up. That's one of the things that makes me really excited about this expansion. It's one of the things that makes me want to have two or three alts on the go. And I think that having relatively brisk gearing actually would mesh with that design really well. Now for the upgrade items, considering that they're upgrades and not acquisition, I also can't help but wonder if it might be okay to be a tad more generous, uh, purely because when you're progressing a raid, you might only get four or five kills per week. For a lot of guilds. <laughs> Three to four weeks for a small item level upgrade, that does feel a bit more stingy. And once most of a raid is on farm, an upgrade every two weeks that's just an eye level upgrade, that could feel a bit stingy. I mean, come on, people have it in farm. Let them rock it through their gear upgrades. Uh, perhaps it would help increase uh, participation in, in the various different modes. Now, to sort of finish this off, I have some important details from Scarzard, one of the developers. So the upgrade items set a piece of gear to that quality. That means that if you acquired a bit of gear from LFR, but you have a heroic upgrade item, well, you could just turn that LFR piece into heroic. Uh, then tier tokens are not going to be added to Nathria or Sanctum. But the creation catalyst is just going to keep on trucking with all of its accumulated charges. So you get the gear early on in the season, you turn it into tier, happy days. That's the great thing about keeping the charges and Blizzard not deciding to reset it. So I think that's great. Also, domination shards disabled. Phew. World bosses also will become fated, of course, depending on the raid that is currently fated. And while Blizzard say they're not interested in adding dinars to the vault or giving us more than three within the span of season four, they do think that offering heroic or mythic upgrade shards could be a part of the great vault. That would be great. Okay, what do I think then? Overall, when I think of the worst of World of Warcraft gearing, it's a lot of things that actually this works to solve. With this, you always make progress when you kill a boss. Then, the creation catalyst cuts the worst parts of RNG out of tier acquisition. It should have been active earlier in Season 3, but it's going to be active from the start of Season 4. The dinars provide the same function for weapons and trinkets. Sure, making epic, exciting things is important and a really, well, the main thing for game development, but it's also very important to remove the worst experiences that the game can provide. And I think that these changes really make a meaningful shot at that. And I think this will make gearing feel better. Will this make it a Dragonflight then? Well, Scarzard said that these are designed for season four first and foremost, but they do reflect changing philosophies. If these are well received, Scarzard said they could undergo significant iteration and could become part of future seasons, and that they want to show the players, with changes like this, that they are interested in continuing to tackle rewards from multiple angles and to listen to our desires for bad luck protection and rewards that match the effort that we put in. That sounds good, Scarzard, and I think the community really appreciates systems like this and posts like the one that you made. From my perspective, it feels really good to be able to do a video like this. To be able to do a video like the one I just did in Talents. Not to be too cheesy, but there is a bit of a feeling of the world is healing. So that is it for today's video. Real top-notch stuff. I'll be fascinated to see how this works in Dragonflight. Let me know what you think. And of course, a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. You can check out their stuff down below. And with that said, I'll see you next time.